Okay, so the first talk is going to be a, a double act with Gabriela Lopez Gonzalez at the University of Leeds, handing over to Richard from Rockenstead. Uh, and they're going to be talking about two years of Elixir UK fellowship uh, and a case study. Hello, I don't know if you can see me. But... So, yeah, the title of our talk is like the two years of Elixir, the UK, UK fellowship, and we're going to talk about the two NERC related case studies. Can I hit the next one? So just a bit of background. So the Elixir Fellowship Program is a program that was created to tackle the, the, some of the hurdles related to research data management, which were identified by the team as time and funding, buy-in and skills. So the idea is that the fellowship will create a cohort of, that will embed research data management and know how in UK universities and institutes and that the group of fellows, we will create training materials and deliver training to our own research groups. So, can you get the next one? Just got the other Yeah. Yeah. That won't work when Gabriel's up on the screen. So I just have to use. Uh, uh, to get, uh, find the right window. Oh, it gone. And it's just, it's right. and we're still on the three uh, theme four for Slido. While we just have a little break. Um, hmm. It's strange because it's not showing me the slide control. Okay. okay, so as you can see, there's a dragon, and that's because um, Shania, who's the community manager, like really um, created this um, visual imagining of what happened. So we have like uh, universities can be seen as castles, we have lots of data, but then the we can't access the data, we can manage it properly because of the hurdles that I mentioned properly. That, and those hurdles are like uh, are represented by the dragon. So here very much in like a spirit, like a fellowship of the rings. Fellows, we want to fight the dragon and we all want, we are going to be ambassadors that we're going to learn from each other and our mentors to prove our research data management in our organizations. So that's in a nutshell what a, the fellowship group is. Yeah, the next one. And then it's like, how are we going to do it? Or how, how the, the organizing team, the man, management team visualize this? So to buy in, so how, how do we manage to, to solve the buy-in problem and the solution was target fellows of any career stages and in different fields. The next uh, hurdle, which is time and funding, it's not just so you get the fellows, but you need to make sure they're engaged. So um, Richard and I, are, and uh, the rest of our fellows, we get paid an honorarium. So we can, our, our timing, our buy-in, we're compensated for it. And also we have access to expert consultants. And then the, the third solution is, well, there's a skill. So the idea is that the group of fellows also become trainers that can deliver training locally. And we all have received a train to trainer courses. And we also have mentors with, of course, that help um, improve our skills. And for me, as an example, more importantly has been the communication that I can have with other fellows like Richard, so we can talk about similar problems and then share ideas. And of course, uh, the buying the time, the funding and the skills have a outcome that can be uh, easily identified. So we're all producing uh, RDM bytes, which are videos that you can access to, access to the Lixi website, but also there's um, training materials, training courses and other activities. Uh, next one, uh, Richard, please. So like in a nutshell, 
So after two years of the Lixir Fellowship, there's, there's now 24 fellows from 18 organizations, as you can see. And we all have different reasons for apply. I will talk more about it in my, my section about the, why I applied. But then having access to skills and mentoring is, has been fantastic. So it's like, I think it's working. I know the, some of the benefits that people who have applied for this uh, have experienced is like benefits, career promotion, and in general, it's like just having a really supportive environment. Some of the people who are interested in data as much as you are, and you can exchange ideas with them. And in relation, so most of the most of the fellows are in the life sciences, talking about genomics, protogenomics, and uh, very kind of different to what uh, Richard and I do. So, but then the, so that in the first cohort, it was more like life sciences, really like hardcore life sciences. And then this, the second cohort where Richard and I come in, we have um, ecological related um, fellowships. So I'm gonna be talking next about my link to Elixir and how my, uh, my can be a NERC related ca case study. And have the next one, Richard. Oh yeah, so a very important thing about Elixir is that we have a, there's a community of experts and we all as fellows have access to them. So we can, it's, it has been really interesting to talk to people from different institutions and learn about how they're managing their data and doing research in, in their organizations. Next one. And of course, so in, in the UK, we have those organizations, but out, across Europe, there's 22 countries. So this year I had the, I was invited to attend the Elixir All Hands, which took place in Dublin. And it was fantastic to see people from all those 22 countries um, talking about what a kind of approaches they take to data management in, in their research. Next one. So now I'm gonna talk about how do my research links fits into Elixir and how it also relates to NERC. So as I said earlier, I'm Gabriela Lopez. I work at the University of Leeds and my role is on, I develop eco-informatic tools for long-term monitoring research. Uh, previously, I worked for a project called Forest Plots where I was a, uh, the lead developer on the data management application for managing forest data tropical forest, and now I'm applying my experience of working in tropical forests to peatlands, designing a similar kind of approach where we have a, a network and a database that we use to manage our data in a standardized format. Next one. So that's part of my research, but then I want to talk about why, why do you apply for the, the fellowship? So I applied because I wanted to develop some RDM training materials where there's no materials. So uh, the peatland community, we do lots of things hands-on, but there's not much training and materials in relation to research data management. So I would, uh, my, my plan is to develop the training materials, but also embed those materials and other materials produced by by uh, the fellowship uh, members and other people in Elixir, try to get all those materials to the, my organization, but also my pizza network and work to create a community of practice, which looks at what happens in the field, but also takes very seriously the research data management. So we can answer some of the pit, pit related research questions. Next one, Richard. And so something really important for me that I'm getting out from this fellowship is that I want to build a community of practice, practice for peatland monitoring. So where we bring together academic researchers, NGOs and government agencies, and also all the volunteers, uh, citizen scientists working on peatland research. And at the core of the training, we have the research data management. And why I'm saying like we want it at the core because last, last year when I was at the IUCN peatland conference, one of the big discussions we had is like, where is the data? What data, what data is being gathered and where is, it, where is it? And how can we make sure that our data is 
best maintained and made available. So, of course, that completely resonates for having a thinking about RDM skills for the people, bringing the RDM skills to the peatland community and also have practical advice on how to verify uh, our data sets. I think the next one, Richard. And a positive thing that I found by joining the league series that there's also lots of communities and there's one recent community that uh, has was a, a group of interest, but uh, now it's a community and it's the biodiversity community, which kind of overlaps a bit with, with what we do in peatlands because quite a lot is about understanding which species live in, in the peatland sites. So uh, my plan now on uh, as an add-on is to think how I can link what I'm doing with the peatland community at Leeds and in Yorkshire with the broader biodiversity community, RDM people from Elixir. Uh, 